I think that that we all recognize that circulating tumor DNA is a very powerful technology um, that is able to identify low volumes of disease oftentimes more uh, quickly than you know traditional methods such as CT scans are able to do. Um, and there's quite a bit of data out there, and I think it's universally accepted now that circulating tumor DNA is a very powerful uh, prognostic biomarker um, for you know recognizing the presence of minimal residual disease after completion of definitive therapies. Um, we know that oftentimes when a patient has um, a, you know um, a, a CT DNA not detected status, that their outcomes are more favorable and these patients are less likely to develop recurrent disease. Whereas if a patient does have you know, detectable circulating tumor DNA, that, that oftentimes this uh, is a harbinger for, um, for you know, eventual recurrence. The issue is we don't know how best to use this information as determined in randomized trials. There's no level one evidence thus far through prospective studies which say that this, this technology has util utility as a predictive biomarker to identify um, you know, patients who do or patients who do not benefit from um, adjuvant um, chemotherapy, which certainly comes with you know, significant uh, toxicity to patients. So there have been multiple studies which are promising and, you know, again, um, often retrospective, um, which have, you know, shown a kind of, um, you know, wide results in terms of, you know, how treatments like chemotherapy, how effective they are in clearing um, circulating tumor DNA and mineral residual disease in, in order to improve outcomes. But we don't have any, you know, randomized controlled trials yet, which analyze this question more, more formally. So this is, you know, what we're trying to, to offer the field and, and more importantly, our patients, um, you know, is, can, is a question of can circulating tumor DNA be used um, as a predictive biomarker to identify benefit of adjuvant chemotherapy in patients with resected colorectal cancer. In the case of our NRG GI005 trial, which is enrolling across the United States and in Canada, um, we're looking specifically at patients with um, what's traditionally been considered low risk stage 2A colon cancer, so a T3 N0 tumor that um, for which based on current practices, the treating oncologist feels that the patient would not warrant adjuvant chemotherapy and would be suitable for observation. And patients are randomized in a one-to-one -one fashion to standard of care, which would be close observation or um, prospective testing of circulating tumor DNA. And then in our case, we'll be using the Gardent um, Reveal assay, which, uh, which incorporates both um, CRC specific uh, somatic mutation profiling, as well as unique epigenome methylation signatures as well. And uh, and, and, and patients, you know, will be in who are randomized to prospective testing will have their uh, uh, blood tested for circulating tumor TNA. And if they're positive and thereby deemed high risk for recurrence, would receive six months of adjuvant chemotherapy with the fluoropyrimidine uh, oxaliplatin combination. So the trial is, is again uh, continuing to enroll. The primary endpoint for the phase two portion is clearance of circulating tumor DNA. And in the larger setting, would be, um, be uh, uh, disease free survival, recurrence free survival in the phase three portion of our trial. So we're trying to um, build upon the, the retrospective series reported thus far by offering level one evidence through a prospective trial, demonstrating that not only is there prognostic, but also demonstrated predictive uh, utility of this powerful technology.